<laughs> Welcome back to Jimmy DeVille's Garage and episode 10 of the Barn Find Fergie project. In this episode, Gav and I are gonna be attempting to time up our engine and I've gotta be honest, we've got no idea how this is gonna go down, so stand by for loads of manual action. Here we go. the timing in this old engine does in many ways feel like we're going to be aligning this old tractor's heartbeat once more. The heartbeat that once drove it from the fields that fingers crossed we hope it will be returning back to before long. Piece by piece and part by part Every step Gav and I take is one step closer to this old girl running again. Back, isn't it, Gav? Back in the shed. Back in the shed of heavenly dreams. Um, we've actually got a bit of news to start off this episode, haven't we? Yeah. And it's not doom and gloom, but it may come across a little bit doom and gloom, but I think it's a really good thing. Yeah. So. Are we, you going to say or am I going to say? Well, let's go for it. Let's we, go for it. We started this project in lockdown and we, we were did. twiddling our thumbs a little bit. Well, well, that's where I found the tractor during lockdown 300 metres from my house in a bush. Yes. Luckily for both of us, we're getting a bit more work in now, so things are starting to pick up a little bit. It, it, it is. So we feel to keep the project uh, sort of moving on and all the rest of it. In a joyous manner. Yeah. Not like it's a stressful thing. We're going to move to once a fortnight. Once a fortnight, so bi-weekly. Yes. Uh, believe it or not, it does actually take four days work between us to create one episode and also as we're starting to manufacture things now for the build we just need a little bit more time so uh, four days once a week was uh, quite a big ask so we're going to go to bi-weekly um, so every other week you're going to be getting an episode of Barn Fine Fergie yep. until she is driving back up the track. Uh, we hope you're not too sad and we hope you know you still stick with us. That's what we've got to say about that isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But it's a good thing because we're busy and working and earning some money <laughs> to pay for some of this, this stuff. So that's good. Um, right, we waffle on. Here we go. Should we actually get into the episode and what we're doing? Let's go for it. Yeah. Right, okay. So this week we are timing up this engine and this is something I really get a little bit nervous about because if you get this wrong, things are just not going to work and even worse, you can break things. So it's got to be done precisely, correctly and uh, just getting everything right. Yeah. So that's why we're consulting the book. Here it is. But uh, we've got to talk a little bit about consulting this book because it is written in ye old English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Words like thus. Thus. And thou. <laughs> thou. Chain wheels marked thus. So um, it does take a little bit of deciphering, um, but we are going to be referring to this. So uh, saying that, Gab, what is the first job we've got to do? Right. So we need to get number one cylinder piston, so the one at the front, at TDC or top dead centre. So that's the front piston right at the top of the bore. We have. And uh, I don't think there's any more, more to say than that then, other than shall we get on with it, Gav? Let's go. Number one piston, TDC. Here we go. Right. Move it now. Yeah, crank around. Keep going? Keep going, mate. Keep going. Keep it. Keep going. Yeah. How close are we getting? We're nearly there, so just a touch more. I'll tell you when I think she's... Um. Okay, don't. Yeah, so give her a little rock there, mate. Yeah, I'm back. Right, so you might have, may have thought we were mad leaving this sump off, but this is the very reason we've done that, so I can have a good look up underneath and I can see number one piston and I can tell exactly when it's a TDC. So a little bit more of a rock there, mate. Yeah, I'm back. Right. Stop there? Yeah, that's it mate. So I can see now that cylinder is right at the top of its stroke for a TDC. You're a stroker. <laughs> uh, so that's the that's the number one piston at top dead centre. 
Next, Gavin, what does it say in our lovely manual? Right, so it says to fit the camshaft chain wheel back to the camshaft, but we didn't take ours off. So camshaft chain wheel stayed on, so we haven't ah, messed with that. We haven't messed with that at all. So then it um, it talks about putting the chain on and then accurately aligning scribe and punch marks crankshaft, camshaft and injector pump chain wheels as shown in figure 131 which is our nice diagram. Okay so there are actually three markings we need to line up. The first one is on this the uh, cam chain wheel and it's got a little centre punch there. Also on this the uh, fuel pump chain wheel there's another centre punch which is here so those two dots need to be lined up just like that and then the next marking that needs lining up is on here the cam chain wheel there's actually a scribe line and if you look really closely on the crank chain wheel there's also a scribe line and with a rule those should be in line which they now are so that is all of the chain wheels now in line but the proof is in the pudding because we still need to get the chain on and them still all to be in about those positions however we have made a little bit of a mistake because you can't get the chain on with the oil pump on, so I think Gav is probably gonna to have to take that off now. I'm sure he'll be really happy about that. Right, so Jimmy's right. Uh, there's no way I can get the chain past there, so I'm gonna to have to whip this oil pump off again. I was a little premature with that, so here we go. Right, so that's the pump off again and you can actually see here with the timing chain it's been rubbing on the case. With the pump off the timing chain that links everything together is going back on. If at first you don't succeed try and try again. This old metal snake is being a little bit tricksy but we've got to make sure that when it goes on, everything is still in the right position. If it came off, it's got to go back on. And that's us back in business. Timing chain back on. So there we go, Gav. We now think everything is timed up, don't we? Fingers crossed, mate. Fingers crossed. And as your mum says with her cooking, the proof is definitely in the pudding. And so what we're gonna do next is put on this, the chain tensioner, if I can keep it in one piece. Um, and once that's on, we'll actually be able to give everything one full rotation. And when it comes all the way around, everything should still be lined up. And that will tell us that the timing is, fingers crossed, correct. Yeah. After that, what we're gonna do. Right, so I'm gonna put this back on, the old oil pump. Now we've got the chain on. You love taking that on or off. <laughs> so this, right, yeah. But this time, are you going to go one step further? What, leave it on? <laughs> leave it on, yes. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, little gear wheel that uh, drives it. And it's got like, an oil splash paint on it. And then that so so that will be all linked in as well? Yep. All right then. Well, uh, there's no good just us sat here talking about it. Shall we get these bits on? Let's get on with it. I can't believe... Dare I say that? Am I going to say this? Yes, I can't believe, Gav, how easily really that did time up. Oh, you shouldn't have said I shouldn't that. have said that. I have said it. Anyway, we better get on. <laughs> Here we go. Why did I say that? That's the chain tension on without the spring. I'm actually going to act as the spring and push pressure against this as we give it one full rotation to see if these timing marks come back together. Gav, do you want to do the honours? We were so focused, we didn't forget to press record. Honest. Uh, that's the dots back together. And that is everything. I'm lining up, Gav. We're A-OK. -okay. Awesome. Right. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oil pump back on. Yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. Looking good. Stop looking so stressed, I you. Don't know, that stressed me out, that dude, but it's fine, isn't it? It's fine, it's looking yeah. good. <laughs> We're happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Breathe. In through the nose, yeah. out through the mouth. Yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm Get all your right, oil yeah. pump back on. It's yeah. all going to be okay. Yeah, come on in. All right, oil pump going back on, and I'm hoping this will be the last time I have to do this. Oh, 
By now, Gav has clearly become an oil pump ninja and it slips on like butter off a hot knife. With the old oil pump back on, it's time to get it mechanically linked back in. Right, so first of all, I'll just whip this crankshaft bolt out so we can get the uh, gear back on that drives the oil pump. Now, the box that I kept this gear wheel in, I left myself a little note on the back so I knew which way around this gear wheel would go, which is a really handy thing to do. So I stick the wood rough key in. Gear wheel should slide on. Mesh with the oil pump, and that's that lovely lined up, meshed, and so the oil pump should drive off the crankshaft now. And here's another little note for you guys if you're enjoying watching us time this engine up, uh, please subscribe. That's the Woodruff key for the main drive pulley going in. If you've got any questions or queries for Gav and I, please don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. That's the key in and over the top slips the little oil deflector plate. Right Gav, a moment of truth, time to put the timing cover on, Yep. but um, I have noticed you've got a little bit of a sad on, on your face, haven't you? <laughs> I've got a bit of a grump on, I'm not happy with the way these gaskets uh, fit up, and we've had a few like it actually, um, they just don't line up. They just don't seem to fit the holes, but we're going to persevere, hopefully we'll get it fitting well enough, but it is a bit sad that these gaskets just don't seem to fit well. Anyway, it goes on. Yeah, we'll struggle to get the bolts in, but uh, we'll get there. So everything is now timed up, on, and ready to go back together. So, timing cover on, Gav. Let's go. We're gonna do it. Yeah. This feels like a big moment of victory. It's all on here. There he goes. Gone on. Right, straight away I'm gonna wind this bolt in on this tensioner. You came to town just to make trouble. That's the chain tensioner adjusted. Got no friends left in this place. Gav and I start by slipping the bolts in the holes where the gasket lines up. You got brains and you got love. Getting this timing cover on really does feel like a cracking bit of progress, even if it is just fighting us a little bit. So I'm really battling with this uh, poorly fitting gasket at the moment. I've had to sort of line it up best I can and there's a couple I've sort of had to adjust a little bit. But they're going in. The bolts are all going in. We're nearly there now. Even Gav spirits aren't dulled by that ill-fitting gasket. With so many imperial bolts to do up, one of us had to hit the spanner. I guess it's my turn. So I'm just going to snug these. What's the difference between snugging it and then nipping it? I'd say nip because they're a little harder than snug. Yeah, well I'm going for a snuggie and you can do the nipping. <laughs> that is the timing cover off. So it's time to refit the inspection hole cover plate. As you can see, the one we took off originally looks like that and we ain't fitting that. Luckily, in episode three, when we got our haul of uh, second hand parts for 100 quid, this was in it. So this is the one that's gonna go on. Got 
Cool, I'm well pleased with that. That is certainly looking a lot better than that old one. Brilliant. So that's the timing cover on, all apart from one item. Lovely. <laughs> uh, that's the old pulley that was on the bottom of it, and it was actually submerged in filth, wasn't it? Yeah. You can almost see where it's completely corroded away, so it needs replacing. Got any ideas how we're going to do that? I was hoping you would. I'm glad you're hoping I was, because I have got a really good idea. A mysterious thing has occurred. We've actually got a mysterious unknown benefactor and from them this parcel arrived and in it Gav was this this is current it's all greasy Gav can't pick it up a uh, beautiful new old pulley which is exactly the same as that one but even more intriguing than that Gav yeah was what's in the bottom here yeah stand by this some very interesting instructions about how that pulley is used so, if you've got a minute and you want to know some very interesting stuff about pulleys and all things interesting, <laughs> we recommend you give this a read. So there's a little photograph of it. Have a little read of that and uh, yeah, enjoy. So, uh, yes Gav, we've got a new pulley. So last job of getting all the timing set up and everything is putting that pulley on and then we can move on to something slightly more tappy too. Yeah. <laughs> happy? Yeah, very happy. Should we get on with it? Yeah. Let's do what the man said. So the last thing to put on this, over this timing case now is the new pulley that we've got. We've got the Woodruff key in, so hopefully she should just slide on a little bit. The note definitely changed then, so it is home and it's on. That is the new timing pulley on. Thank you, whoever you are. Moving on, the next thing we're gonna be working on is underneath here, the rocker box, because we're gonna be setting the tappet. So Gav, what do we need to do? Right, well, luckily for us, there's a badge on the side of this rocker box that tells us that we need to set the clearances at 12 thou, and all that is, is the gap between the valve when it's shut and the rocker it is and to do that we're going to need these these which are my first set of feeler gauges i've had these quite a few years they're pretty well worn but you know what i love them yeah and that is the 12 thou there so we're going to be slotting that into the gap and making sure the tolerance is as nice and this is just nicely firmly knit yeah and then we'll adjust as required right? and we have actually slackened these all off at the moment so they all need doing so when we start in the front i'm working back and just probably double checking that everything is right Right, without further ado, should we get this rocker box off and uh, get on with it? Yep, sure on there. Oh, lovely. Here we go, let's set these tappets. Wish I was in London this summer, the sea. To save yourself some time, you can check the tappets in the order in which the pistons rise and fall. But Gav and I have decided to start from the front and work to the rear because we don't want to miss any. Every time we set a tappet, we turn the engine over, making sure the next cam is at its lowest point. It's really advisable to double check your tappet spacings, doing it all through twice over. I also like to do them when the engine's been running and everything is nice and warm because that metal is going to expand. If you've got any hints or tips about how to set tappets, we'd love to hear about them in the comments section down below. Right 
once the cam is in its lowest position. The adjustments can be made, ensuring the 12 valve feeler gauge is gripped just right. Now it's all done, we're giving everything a good oiling up. Gav, I think you'd agree, a lot of technical things going on today. Getting the timing right and getting those tappet spacings set. It's all been a bit fiddly, hasn't it? It has all been a little bit fiddly. Um, one last job to do on the engine today, and that's top it off with the old rocker box. It's now time to seal this all with it in its tomb. But before we do, there's a little thing I need to talk to you about because a little birdie has mentioned to me that after the last episode, you stopped on the way home and had a Jack Mackie D's. <laughs> Yeah, and I blame you entirely, mate. You oh, egged me fault. on. You egged me on. You said, go on, Gav, you deserve it. <laughs> I'd resisted up to this point. Yeah. And now I feel like I want to do it again tonight. Well, I don't, I don't blame you. Just, just for the good people at home, what is it you uh, enjoyed yourself with? Well, I went for a Big Mac meal, large, of course. Of course. A, you know, a chaser, burger chaser. A burger chaser. <laughs> oh, oh, the dreams, oh, the dreams. Anyway, yeah. I think it's time for us uh, to top this engine out. So uh, we need to put the gasket on and yeah. then get that rocker box on. Yeah. Should we get on with it? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Gasket, cork gasket. These are, are a little bit fiddly because they don't have anywhere to seat. They're just on a flat top. So you've just got to make sure these go down in the right place. That nice and straight along it. I hate it when you see them hanging out awkwardly. That looks pretty good. She look, how is she on the end there? She looks nice. And yeah? Yeah, I, I think that's all right. Looks good to me. Right then. Well, do you want to slip the old rocker box on? Here we go. She Make goes. sure uh, those shafts go nicely into the holes. Yeah, of course. That's all right. I always hate it when the shaft misses the hole. Terrible business, a terrible business. <laughs> That's, a shame, That's dropped on there, nice. nice. Oh no, is that you, mm, hang on. Just, just raise it up a touch. Just weigh that out a little bit there. She just slipped under. That is the gasket and rocker box in place. And sadly that does mean that this is the end of the episode. This engine has finally, Gav, been topped out. If you've got any questions for Gav and I, please remember to leave them in the comment box down below and one of us will get back to you. Also, if you've liked what you've seen, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll know the next time we release an episode. Until next time, from Gav and I, please remember we're now bi-weekly, but we will be back in two weeks. Until then, happy rocker boxing and we'll catch you later. <laughs> and we don't really have a clue what I'm doing now. Victoria Sponge. My mum makes the best Victoria Sponge in the UK slash world. Actually, no. I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to explain myself uh, because technically, I don't think it is Victoria. Uh, what do you call it? Victoria Sponge. Because I think Victoria Sponge is jam only but my mum does the whole uh, jam and cream you know butter cream so i don't think technically that's a victoria sponge but whatever it is it's the best end off although i'll tell you what <laughs> that chocolate brownie your mum done the other week now that was special well, obviously I'll go with a Big Mac. I always stick with a Big Mac because they are the biggest, normally. Of the Macs. Are you having a Mackie D's on the way home? You bet I am. You tyke.